We'll call this work session Monday, June 5th to order. Invocation given by Ms. Tolliver and the Pledge of Allegiance by myself. May we bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us another day, another holiday that has passed. Thank you for the many blessings that you have in store for our city. Father, please continue to go with our first responders and everyone that make up this great community. I ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First thing tonight is to discuss the 2024 fishing tournament proposals from Chamber of Commerce, and that's four different tournaments, I believe. Okay. Mr. Roden. Can you? Thank you, Mr. President, Council, Mayor. Uh, cannot believe we're talking about 2024 already, but they are, they're, boy, they're calling us like crazy, getting ready, trying to get on the, on the calendar for next year. Um, you should have them, I think, all in your packet, uh, Whitney. You, you, uh, you put, we'll start with uh, the Angler's Choice. Angler's Choice Tournament wants to come back. They have not been here in probably three or four years. This is probably one of the better tournaments, uh, one of the best tournaments, because every single one of these fishermen come from the Midwest. They come from Indiana, Illinois, uh, Nebraska, just all in the Midwest. So there's nobody even close. Nobody lives here close at all. Uh, it's a it's a great tournament. They want to come here uh, and have the tournament actually on a Thursday and Friday, which is another good thing, rather than it being on the weekend. They want to come March the 7th and the 8th, two, uh, 2024. Um, estimating about 300 boats. Uh, so we're talking about 600 anglers. So it's, it's a big, big tournament. Initially requested $45 per boat. I've negotiated that down to $40 already. Uh, then we have to provide uh, six do double occupancy rooms for them, uh, also for their, their, their directors. So that is the Angler's Choice Tournament, March 7th and 8th, 2024. Any questions after looking at your pack through your packets on that particular Which program? one? Which one is this, Rick? There's four this here one. and I'm getting mixed up. This one. The second one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said 40 per boat. How many boats again? 300 boats. Okay. And again, these, these, none of these people live anywhere close to Alabama. So Have we had this one before? Yes, we've had it several times before. One of our favorites. Uh, they, because they, they've run a fantastic tournament, have been doing it for many, many years. Uh, Rick Burns is the tournament director. Uh, it's just been three or four years since they've been here. But this is the kind. This is one of the better tournaments for sure. They're 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 okay. very very good Plus tournaments. Rick, you said you had negotiated down to forty. Is there a maximum? I know one of the tournaments has a per boat charge, but there's a maximum. Does this one have this a one maximum? This one does not have a maximum. It's just straight forty dollars per boat. Because I mean, three hundred boats. That's twelve grand. Yeah. And so I can hey, plus I, rooms. I can certainly negotiate. Glad to negotiate up to a maximum. Might want to do a maximum ten thousand or eight thousand, whatever. That's okay. whatever y'all want me to do. Okay. All right. Any other questions on Angler's Choice? So it's forty dollars per boat, unlimited right now. Yes, that's what they're asking. Mm -hmm. So in times gone by, how many boats did we have? You, they're usually pretty consistent around three hundred boats. You can. So we're looking at twelve thousand dollars. Plus six rooms. Plus rooms, yes. Uh, total, that would be 24 room nights. Mm -hmm. so. so it's four nights. Okay. Six rooms for four nights. <coughs> okay. All right. Any other questions on that one? Okay, next uh, was one that I sent in late. Uh, Alabama Bass Federation is Stan Brothers here. Sam was going to drive over. He's been, they've come here several times through the years. It's not one of the huge tournaments, but it's the ABF, Alabama Bass Trail, I mean, Alabama Bass Federation. 
Uh, they want to bring two tournaments next year, one in May. Uh, practice May the 1st and 2nd, tournament May the 3rd and 4th. Uh, that particular tournament, I negotiated them to take care of their own hotels. Uh, so I got out of that. They do need a meeting space for 75 uh, people, 60% uh, stay in hotels. Uh, but it, again, it's not one of the larger, larger tournaments. This is the one, Mike, that uh, you, you had read where, it, it would, or somebody said, uh, uh, no, mayor, yeah. Uh, yeah, a maximum. Ma has a maximum, $45 per boat, not to exceed $4,000. Mm -hmm. Then they want to come back in September for uh, part of their championship. Um, September, the pra uh, official practice day, September the 4th through the 6th. Uh, tournament day, September the 7th through the 8th. Uh, they would need a, uh, some hotel rooms for that particular one because they're bringing in some national people. Uh, it is 60 to 65 boats from the, uh, the from the state of Alabama and Mississippi. Uh, they need three rooms for three nights, so it'd be nine room nights. Need meeting space for 150. 75 to 85 percent of these stay in hotels because they're coming from other parts besides uh, just Alabama. And again, 45 dollars per boat is what they're requesting, not to exceed again 4,000 okay. dollars. We've had them before. It's been a few years since uh, since they've been here. They run a good tournament. It's just not a huge tournament. And then the last one, uh, y'all are very familiar with because we've had them for two years in a row, the uh, uh, Major League Fishing Toyota Series. Uh, they want to come back. They've been here twice, and they've absolutely loved it. Uh, it's a huge tournament. Major League Fishing is a huge trail. They want to come late February or early March. Um, point out a couple of things uh, about this one. Uh, they have, um, uh, they, they run their, their uh, statistics on 300 anglers, 150 boats. The last two years, this year in February, uh, they were here February the 23rd, they had 265 boats. And then last year, 2022, they had 325 boats. But they run their, uh, statistics off of prediction of 150 boats. So they've exceeded that quite a bit. Uh, so it'd be, uh, if they do it at 150 boats, 150 co-anglers, that's 300 anglers. Competition days are, are Thursday through Saturday. So it's three days. The full field, it, it, all of them fish Thursday and Friday. Uh, so that's in, in, in years past between 500 and 600 fishermen for the first two days, except, well, I take it back, this year we had bad weather, so they let them all fish Saturday too. But what they usually do, they uh, have all the anglers Thursday and Friday, and then they cut to 50 anglers on Saturday for the championship. Uh, they have to have a registration meeting on Wednesday for 450 people. We usually use the Civic Center. Um, based on the economic impact, based on 150 boats, 300 anglers, is uh, $973,000. Then they also, this one here is on TV. It's on, they, we get a lot of publicity. Uh, the total media value is $192,000 for media value uh, for a total economic impact of 1.1 million. So Major League Fishing, uh, as y'all well know, is a, is a, a big deal. Uh, the host fee that they're asking is, is the same as last time. It's uh, $17,500. Then we have uh, other expenses of about $2,500. So what we've done the last two years is partner with y'all. Uh, the chamber's done $10,000 and y'all have done $10,000. So they're asking for the same thing again this time. If, um, if we decide that we don't want to participate in that amount, uh, are they they just not going to come? Uh, I don't know. You take for every three thousand dollars in tax, we got to generate a hundred thousand dollar break even as far as sales tax goes. Not looking at the other stuff, but oh yeah. If you put out twelve thousand, are we going to sell four hundred thousand dollars more at uh, sales tax level? Sales tax, but you also keep in mind you get seven percent of the lodging tax. So that we give to somebody else for the most part. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, I don't know where all, all, all that goes. I know we get one and three quarter percent of the 
that's the county lodging tax and then plus a dollar. So obviously we don't get our money, but we don't come close to getting our money back. Y'all come closer to getting your money back than we do because you get 7% and plus the sales tax. We don't get any sales tax. But it's, I mean, it's obviously a return for the community. That's the, I mean, that's obviously the reason the chamber does it. We're, we want to help our member businesses and our uh, hotels and restaurants and everything. That's, you know, we don't, we don't get a return on it. We turn right around. Three upcoming payments coming that you just mentioned. Right? Four. That's four. a total of four yeah. that we just mentioned. There was two, there was so how much for each one? Okay, the first one, uh, the first two that I mentioned was uh, the, well, the first one was Angler's Choice, so it's uh, $40 per boat, so if they have 300 boats, it'd be $12,000. The other two were $45 per boat, and you figure, uh, let's say, $65 a boat, so anybody good in their head? <laughs> it'd be cheaper than the $4,000 um, yeah. if we just... Maximum four thousand dollars. Four thousand. Yeah, maximum four thousand. Four thousand two times. Next two. That yeah, one in May at, and one in September. You'd be looking at about three thousand. And then so. the last one is the Toyota Series, uh, twenty thousand dollars total. And keep in mind also, we've got this. In fact, I invite y'all this weekend. We've got the McDonald's Big Bass Splash, which is now the largest bass tournament in the Southeast United States. We this is our nineteenth year. Chamber pays for every bit of it. It's twenty five thousand dollars. We don't come to y'all for any help on that one. Now, if y'all want to help, I'll certainly, <laughs> I'll take your money. <laughs> but it's 25, it's the most expensive tournament we have. Last year, 1,325 fishermen from 28 states in Canada. So it's big. That's $25,000 straight out of my budget uh, that we, we cover, we've always covered that entire thing at, uh, for 19 years. But uh, and we certainly don't get our money back, but uh, the community does. Because it's a multi-million dollar impact. All right, anyone else have any questions on any of these tournaments? But I invite y'all out this weekend. Please come out if you've never been out to the Big Bass Splash. It's a very unique tournament. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Weigh-ins every single hour. Most of your bass tournaments, is they go out and fish all day, come in and weigh five fish. It's a two-day tournament, they weigh 10 fish, and whoever's got the total for five fish or two, uh, 10 fish wins the tournament. This one here is a weigh-in every single hour. It pays the top 15 places every single hour. Top fish every hour uh, uh, wins $1,000. Whoever catches the one big fish for the entire weekend wins a $53,000 bass boat. But it's a great, and, I, and if you're gonna come out and you wanna pick a day, come Sunday. Sunday afternoon, it is their standing room only at the bait and tackle shop uh, down at Goose Pond, and it is quite a production. A lot of people from all over the United States, and uh, it's it's quite a quite a tournament, very very unique tournament, because they uh, again they weigh in one fish every hour, so it's it's crazy. Anybody wants to volunteer? Believe me, me and Lydia will take your name down <laughs> immediately. We need uh, we need boat inspectors, and we need uh, people to register the fishermen every hour when they come in. So I encourage you to come, and it's fun. Anybody that's ever done it, I know Mike's done it. Mm -hmm. Every year, I think Debbie makes him do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Nita's done it. That's right. Nita's been uh, absolutely. So we encourage you. If, uh, we'd love for you to come out and help us. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Thank y'all very much. Thank you. We'll put all four of those on next week's meeting. All right. Discuss the resolution to award the bid for the microwave rehab and resurfacing, resurfacing project. Uh, Ms. Phillips, we go over that. We posted one bid, advertised once in the Times Daily, mailed three bids, and received two bids for rehabilitating and resurfacing Michael Rogers Group bid $359,997.20. It's recommended that the bid be awarded to Rogers Group as the lowest responsible bidder that met specifications, and also that the bid be awarded with a 5% contingency based on an expected increase in the asphalt index. You see this in your packet, uh, and just a reminder, um, this is basically goes from the front of Chick-fil-A to the, where the old Geno's was. This is the, that area right there. So all this work the street department's been doing in that area, it would fix repaving all that area. And of course, in front of Chick-fil-A where it's destroyed right now. So, yeah. but this does not include the intersection. That will be bid, would you say? Okay, so that's that's coming up for bid and 
We, we're all expecting it'd be a lot higher than this for that intersection. Of course, you've got the arms and everything, so. So anyone have any questions about this bid? No questions, we'll put that on next week's meeting then. Uh, number three, discuss the tractor leases for the solid waste and landfill departments. Mr. Ledwell. These leases have been in effect for three, I think three years. Um, they have expired, and we've got a couple options that we can do on them. Um, I made you all a copy. Um, these, these new leases are for just two tractors. We have three. One of ours is very low hours, and the amount of money we owe for it, um, I would recommend that we just pay that one off and, and keep it because we owe $8,875 on the one at the Scottsboro office landfill. There's two at the big landfill in Hollywood. Uh, but the one at Scottsboro just don't have a lot of hours on it and there's no need of, of trading that thing in or anything else. We just need to keep it for a while. The ones at Hollywood have more hours and they're not terrible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you two options in front of you. We can do the leases as you see and take the amount of equity that's offered us with those two tractors and have a low payment on that new lease, which is 641 if you'll flip me it a month. Or I think we'll be okay if we wanna just choose to pay these three machines off. Um, we owe 88.75 a piece for two of them and 12.250 for one of them. We can pay those off and then look at this lease in another year or two, um, I think we'll be fine with it. No more, we, we haven't had any trouble with them. Um, so I, I, I don't have that in your package because I just thought about it over the weekend, but I, I think I might just pay the balance and, and, and not release them right now. So Wait. we would own the track. We would own them. And that's the way we set it up when we did it. We leased with an option at the end because I thought we might have some low hours and it would be beneficial to us just to keep them. What about the warranty? <coughs> That's the thing, the warranty is expired. Once we pay those off, you know, the warranty's done, but for no more hours on them, I think I'd take a chance on them for a little while. That was my next question. How many more hours is it gonna be before we get into the maintenance part of it? Well, you know, we use these machines mainly in your spring, summer, you know, it's not all year round machine. Um, I, I think we'll be fine to relook at this in another year. Uh, we, we should make it fine. Uh, and we may even choose to continue after a year, but looking at it in another year. So you're saying in another year to sell these and then go back to lease? Absolutely. I can tell you what these are worth right now. You know, the, the equity that you have in these is about ninety thousand dollars. You know, if we, if we wanted to sell them, trade them, whatever you want to do, it's there. But I think our equity will still be really high if we looked at it in another year. All three of these twenty nineteens. Yes, sir. Okay. It's not a bad idea to swap them out like Mr. Dahl was alluding to as far as warranty, but us using these just a seasonal use, I think we're okay to, to not get in another three-year lease, you know, for at least another year. So they're under five years old. We, we can relook at next year and, and make a decision because we can get some good money after using them. More Mostly money. what are they used for, mowing? They're used for bush hogging, yes, sir. Anyone else have any questions on the tractors? If you'll get that to us all, and then uh, we'll put it on next week's meeting to make a decision on it. <coughs> Thank you. Number four, discuss short-term rentals. Uh, Mr. Kinnamer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. For the last several years, we have seen an increase rate of use of short-term rental units uh, amongst city 
bureaucrats, attorneys, fin finance directors, and such. Uh, this is an area that is uh, not addressed. <clears throat> the city at the current time does not allow it legally, though we know it happens. It happens with every Airbnb rental, every short-term rental that is happening in the city and its police jurisdiction. Uh, what this proposed ordinance will do is provide a framework for you all to review and decide how you want to approach the issue. Uh, the ordinance starts off with basically rules and regulations, things to do with health, safety, and fire. Right now, there is no requirement that an Airbnb that is done in Scottsboro, Alabama have a, a fire alarm. There is no requirement that there be signs posted or information provided how to get out of a fire situation. Uh, you have all of these things that are done in hotel rooms that are not done in those kinds of situations. What this would do is change that. Uh, you would be required to have insurance, you would be required to fulfill the life safety code, uh, basically like any other commercial rental uh, thing. That's not to keep you from renting it, but it would put the hotels, boarding houses, uh, and Airbnb kinds of things on the same pathway. And that's what this ordinance does. Uh, the key thing to it, and uh, someone asked me, well, would it affect RVs? No, it would not affect RVs. Uh, this has to do with dwellings and dwelling units, and they're defined in the ordinance. It would require someone who wanted to uh, do this kind of thing to first apply for a permit. Um, I don't know what fee you would want to charge. It's going to cost a little bit of money to do it. There's a blank in the proposed ordinance for that. Uh, then who you're going to have do it. <coughs> I thought that the building department would, might be the best place to start. Uh, then a permit, which would be in line with the business license uh, ordinance of the city to do this kind of thing have a provision that it would be allowed all over the city if you wanted. You could put restrictions on it. But it could not be allowed in places where the subdivision restrictions, private subdivision restrictions, do not allow it. Uh, the would require smoke detectors, things of that nature. Uh, not quite background checks, but information provided. Provide for penalties. Uh, provide for parking, provide for uh, limited occupancy. <clears throat> you couldn't have 14 people staying in one hotel room or one uh, room in uh, that kind of situation. Uh, it would then uh, have a situation where you could, uh, what you want the lodging tax to be. Uh, I left those blanks. The, logically, it would seem to me, that the same thing you charge a hotel is what you'd want to charge the Airbnb or whoever like that. Okay. Be it allowed onto and charged with uh, by the owner who would pay on a monthly basis. This is for y'all to review. Uh, there it's several ordinances around the state that this is based upon right now. Uh, a lot of this came out of Huntsville's, but it, some of it came out of other places. Uh, I would hazard a guess that most of the larger cities and medium-sized cities, if they have not done this yet, are about to. I feel like we're kind of late to the game on this whole situation. And so we, uh, we, we need to address this. Um, I've also asked Mr. Kenmer about doing a public input to give the public a chance to speak on this, whoever would like to. So uh, I'm going to schedule that for the next work session, which will be next Monday. So anyone have any questions or comments about the short-term rentals? Will we have to come up with a, if, if they don't follow the guidelines, uh, a penalty? 
a fine. Yes, sir. It is established in the ordinance. Okay. So, when they apply for a permit, then the building department will go out and inspect. Is that that was that is a possibility? At least they would receive it and have the right to go out and inspect. It does not require them, I don't think, to inspect. But you have to swear under oath that certain things are there. And another question I have is so, you know, there probably are some already here. Yes. And if the neighbors are probably going to be the ones that will help us check on them, but if somebody calls in and says somebody's renting out an Airbnb next to my house, who will go out and check on it? Would it be? I would assume the city's enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just a how we yeah. check them. It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be addressed by us or the mayor also. Yeah. Because we, we can also be looking at having a business license, you know. Oh. Okay. You'll be required to have a business license. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions on this? No questions. Like I said, we'll move this to next week for the work session and give the public a chance to put input on this before we move any further on. Okay. Well, that will conclude this work session. Um, so there's no delegations tonight. Uh, we'll go to reports. Mayor? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The only thing I've got tonight, uh, I think the Water, Sewer, and Gas Board started their Ashmore Lane project today. Is that correct? Um, tried to start. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ashmore Lane, at least one side, will be closed for, for some period of time, and it will be followed at some point uh, by the city's repair of the culvert on Scott Street right at that same intersection. So everybody's patience while this is all going on. Uh, but uh, they did start or tried to start today, but it will be going on for some period of time. That's all I've got, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Dahl? Yes, I do have something today. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like the council and mayor to consider uh, utilizing any ARPA funds that we may have left to uh, and earmark those funds to repair, modify <clears throat> a number of different maintenance problems at Bynum and Veterans Fields. Uh, buildings, gates, fencing, bathrooms, sunshades, or nets, water fountains don't work, snack bar, painting, stuff like that. So it's a lot of cosmetic stuff. And personally, I believe that these maintenance issues have been uh, needed for a long time. And it compounded during COVID where uh, the maintenance issues were let go even more. Therefore, I believe this project fits the ARPA program due to the magnitude of neglect of the field and buildings at Veterans and Bynum Fields. Okay. I would recommend that the RECOM director, mayor, and maybe the city council member that is the chair for that department do a walkthrough and note all repairs that are needed for safety and appearance. And, um, and bring those back to us so we can estimate a cost and how long or how much of the repairs or cosmetics we have to do. Okay. Um, I think we owe this to our citizens, our visitors, and, and the Bynum Foundation that uh, gave us this land to yeah. for these park facilities. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Dahl. Uh, Mr. Wheeler, I hate to ask you with Mr. Green in the room, but do you know how much ARPA funds we have left? <laughs> but I don't want him to know how much so we have far. left. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Just for me, eyeballing it, I figured anywhere from fifty to hundred fifty thousand dollars. No, that's, that's, just that's without cosmetics. tackling. Yeah, that's not not tackling fields, though. No, no. And so, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Tolliver? I don't have anything tonight. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Mr. Ashford? Uh, Mayor, uh, whenever you can fit it in your schedule, the paving committee would like to meet. Yeah, I was thinking we were talking about that today. Okay, so good. We'll get that 
set up for next week at the early, at the latest. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. No, thank you, Miss Frederick. Uh, yes, the summer reading program starts this week at the Scottsboro Library. If Jerry could add a little bit to that. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Uh, just to remind everyone, uh, next week we will have a meeting and a work session followed by. Because June 19th, the next week after that, there'll be no meeting. That's a holiday. June 26th, um, we'll do a meeting and work session on the 12th, and so we'll have a meeting on the 26th. Then July 3rd, there'll be no meeting. That'll be a holiday. And so July 10th, we'll do a work session and meeting. So we've got a couple of double ups, so everyone be prepared for that. I have nothing else. I appreciate everyone coming. We're adjourned. That's all we're doing.